Jeremy has a secret he'd like to share with everybody right now. Yeah, I can. No, I'm not going to. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to. I'm going to be very nice. Beg him. Insist that he tell you. I'll tell you later. It's hilarious. It is. Uh, so I think uh, um, because he put his mic down, <laughs> I'm supposed to talk first. Um, uh, so uh, Chris and I um, have actually been mortal enemies fighting tooth and nail since day one. Um, and this was before pinball, by the way. We didn't even know each other. How many wedgies have I given no, you? No, that's not true. So actually, uh, Chris came in when I was working uh, on my first title with Stern, which was um, Ghostbusters. And he came in uh, to say, I mean, work on Batman. What says Ghostbuster shit? Yeah, no one cares. I could do better. Um, does, it, does everyone know uh, our, our, how we got into pinball? Do, or do you want bored? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll do the quick one of mine, and then Chris, you do the quick one of yours. Sure. Um, uh, I had tremendously bad luck in life. I'm just seeing who actually knows the story. That's why I paused. Um, uh <laughs> Shout out to the next seminar. Um, anyway, uh, um, uh, I started uh, as an illustrator um, in 2011. Before that, I was a, um, uh, I was a lot of things, but I was a uh, creative director for a software company. Uh, very boring, uh, not as much creative fun. Um, and so I started actually doing illustration. What happened was um, uh, I put two pieces of work out on the internet, and uh, a fella by the name of John Papaduke, I assume, uh, Googled zombie art. I don't know, whatever. And, uh, and he got me because he was working on a, a Ben Hex zombie adventure land, and he needed an artist. Um, he then, uh, you know, had me work on a billion other games, one of which was uh, Magic Girl, uh, which if you stick around after, you'll learn about. Uh, you'll learn more about that. Um, and anyway, from that, um, uh, things went funny uh, and not in a funny way. <laughs> Look it up. I'm not going to go into it. And, uh, and then uh, um, I met Dennis Nordman. Dennis Nordman introduced me to Greg Ferris, and the rest is history. And uh, now I do too many games, and uh, I need to just back off and let Chris take over. I thought you were going to tell my history, too. Oh, no, no, no. no. Everybody, I mean, the, I don't have much of a story to tell. Uh, basically, I don't know how much of this Stern would approve of, but... Uh, I mean, all, all's well that ends well, I suppose. Uh, uh, Batman 66 was a game that was being done by Stern as well as Joe Kamenko, which is known as Kapow Pinball. Uh, Joe brought in some casino guys to do the artwork on the game, and the casino guys didn't know much about pinball, and it showed in their shitty-ass art package. Can I swear? Should I not? Should probably, I could swear? Fuck yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry if there's any children. Um, and... Uh, where did I leave? <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, George Gomez basically said, Greg, we can't put this pile of crap art out on this game. Find somebody. He might be paraphrasing that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, paraphrasing. Joe will forgive me. We're pals. And uh, so uh, Greg basically just did a Google search for 66 Batman, and my art came up because I've been a huge Adam West fan my entire life. And that's how I got the job. And then I did uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and the Beatles and the Monsters, and then I made the mistake of showing Kaneda the Monsters artwork, and he showed the world, and Stern fired me. <laughs> that's actually true. Well, they didn't fire me, but suddenly there was no <laughs> work to yeah, do. I, follow, I, follow. <laughs> I actually didn't know the Kaneda story. That's interesting. Yeah. But, well, Who's Stern, Kaneda? Does anyone S know? Stern didn't warn me who Kaneda was and what he does. So in my defense, Kaneda's, if you want to know how Kaneda operates, um, Charles, I haven't seen you all weekend. Where you been? <laughs> um so, yeah, Kaneda is like, oh, well, show me the art. I'll give you my opinion, man. You know, I'm really into pinball, and I won't show anyone. You know, you can trust me. 
And so I showed him some JPEGs and I think approximately three seconds after he had them in his hand, he, the entire pinball world had them. And then it got back to Stern and then Stern's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oops. <laughs> so yeah, so that was unfortunate, but you know, all's well that ends well, right? <laughs> Uh, there's plenty of other pinball companies out there, and uh, I'm having a good time. And so that's my story. Where are we going to take this from here? Should we ask each other questions? Well, we want you to know, first of all, that we're going to rely heavily on you guys to ask questions because what we have to say about ourselves is kind of boring. Boring, uh, hard to do. You know, no one wants to sit there and talk about themselves for 45 minutes. So we're really going to hope that you guys have some good questions. And we have a fine prize of this Galactic Tank Force memorabilia framed illustration. Um, either, either for the best question or somebody who can ask or answer a, a good trivia Worst question. question wins in my book. Worst question, well now there's gonna be a whole bunch of just crap you, questions. You, you sir. Ladies first. Um, <laughs> now's not the time. Um, no. Parker's first. Uh, Parker's <laughs> first. Uh, no. Uh, you know, not. I don't think so. Other than I will say this. I also am a huge Batman fan. Unfortunately, I was working on something else. I couldn't work on it. There was no way I was going to work on it. But that's the one. That's the one that he's done. That I go. Oh man, that I would love that one. It wouldn't have been as good, but uh, it doesn't matter. I can't think it of it. It would have been the same, but oh, it would no, have been, been damn different. good. It would have been different. It would have been different. Um, can you think of any? Um, something that you've done that I wished I'd done, or well, just something we want to do? That's what it's morphed into now. Something that you've done that I wished I could do. Go down the list Ghostbusters, da not Daredevil. Ghostbusters, Deadpool, Deadpool. Iron Maiden, uh, Primus, uh, Turtles, Avengers. Uh, and there goes Godzilla. that trivia question Godzilla. There you go. Godzilla. Yeah, Would have loved go. to have done Godzilla. Yeah, that makes sense. I actually sent Greg a drawing of, I guess they call him Ghidorah these days, but I used to call him Ghidra, and uh, Greg said, fuck off. So I don't think he said that. I think you're <laughs> no, paraphrasing Greg, Greg again. Did not say but, that. Um, uh, yeah. No, he said thank you. And <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. He, said, <laughs> yeah, he said thank you and nothing else. Greg's very right. quiet. Yeah, I, I, are there uh, are there any other questions that we don't have answers to? <laughs> okay, yeah, you go first. Speak of the devil. Greg's here. Greg, come on. No. Greg, uh, we were just putting words <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> he paraphrased you. He, he, oh, thank you. Um, ask the question again. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Well, Jeremy gets his inspiration from a lovely art director named Greg Ferris. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would argue since we deal with IP a lot, uh, and this is where Chris can speak outside of, the, of that realm, but where you, um, you, you, know, you really do your research uh, on the property. Um, you know, in most cases, we don't get ourselves involved with an IP or property we don't love and understand. Um, but you still you still do more deep diving as far as stylistic inspiration. Um, uh, I get that I, I get a lot of artists um, asking me that young artists in particular. And the only thing I can say is you just keep trying to do more of what you want to see, and eventually um, the good stuff sticks around, the bad stuff goes away, and then all of a sudden you're left with a style, I guess. I'd, to add to that, I would just say, um, you know, not every title you get is something that you love, but you, you know, I always, and I, I'm sure I can speak for Jeremy on this too. Oh no, I love um, all of them. You have to put yourself in the position of the people who do love it. So you have to take something and say, like, what would they want to see? We, as he said, we do our research, we look into it, we have to then marry what what people would want, what fans of that would want and what pinball requires. Because sometimes those things don't always jive and you have to find a way to make it work. 
So that, that's, that's really what it is. It's a, the, the inspiration, I guess, is wanting to make pinball people happy and, and make fans of that property happy. And then we just do our work. Yeah. So in my in my case, um, I grew up in northern Indiana, out in the cornfields. I was a very tall kid with zero athletic ability. It's very unfortunate. Um, I was always expected to play, you know, basketball, whatever, and uh, boy, I couldn't do that. But I could draw ever since I was very young. My grandmother, uh, who passed away the other year, uh, after she passed away, we found um, drawings on, on little pieces of paper like this uh, marked uh, Jeremy, two years old, Jeremy, three years old, and by the way, there were some Batman. I don't know that I would have put that together, but my mom did. Um, uh, they, didn't, they didn't quite look like Batman, but... Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I want one, Batman. Um, and so uh, for me, it was just I, I always gravitated towards um, drawing. I, 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 you know, that's all I did when I was in school and classes. I would just doodle throughout the entire time. Um, I actually I grew up uh, in the missionary church. My parents made me go. Uh, and and uh, I would not go to Sunday school because I was a very shy kid. And so I would sit in the, uh, in the pews with the adults and just uh, – doodle and draw the whole time. I'd say I probably learned how to draw in church. <laughs> and my mom would be like, don't draw monsters. People are looking. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, but that didn't stop me. Uh, she still says that to this day, by the way. She's like, can't you draw anything nice? Um, uh, Foo Fighters is the closest to something that she goes, I like that. That's not good. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so, so you just gravitate towards things. I liked comics, I loved cartoons. Um, animation was huge for me growing up. Um, I actually in college became an animation major. So um, the idea of, of clean lines, clean silhouettes, excitement and action is always, you know, I've gravitated towards that. I also learned very early on that I couldn't do what the people that I really liked could do. And so I said, I can't compete in the same space. I have to find my lane. And so I worked really hard to try to find, uh, actually, I, you know, that's terrible. But I think actually most of, most of what I've done is me trying not to compete with someone else in some space, which is probably a terrible way to do things. But it works. So. I think you found your channel. He does a good job, doesn't he? <coughs> Uh, he, he just did that so that I will, in turn, respond and go, but Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No, did you, uh, in addition to that, were you asking about, like, maybe artists that we looked up to, or just, do you have any art you want to add in artists? Oh, well, uh, Neil Adams, Batman era was definitely on my, I mean, like, that was, that was it for me. Um, uh, I grew up, you know, when, you know, Frank Miller came in with the Dark Knight, things like that. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things that uh, other people are inspired by, but also Hanna Barbera cartoons. That's where my line work comes from. Ted Sennett. I mean, that's literally. I look at Ted Sennett and I'm like, that guy should have, you know, whatever. But um, but yeah, so stuff like that. Um, I yeah, I a similar similar growing up experience. I had the pl my parents are here, but they're not in this room, and I wish they were because I humiliate them right now. Um, I got all my drawing practice and sitting in my room being grounded. Because I have an older brother and a younger sister, and if anybody's that's a hard child, to believe, Chris. I you can't get, imagine you get blamed for everything. <laughs> who drank the pop? I'm sorry. Who drank the soda? Who drank the coke? Uh, it wasn't me. Sure, it wasn't. You're grounded. God damn it! <laughs> but then what they would do, and, and you guys will enjoy this, is extremely humiliating. Um, they're like, oh, he's just going in his room and playing with clay and drawing and all that. So then I would get sent to the bathtub. Let's make him uncomfortable, lay in the bathtub, and write down, I will not drink the Coke. I will not drink this the Coke. This is getting very dark. Is everyone okay? times. <laughs> but I got a career out of it. So thanks, thanks, Mom and Dad. Um, 
And I, I don't know about you, you didn't mention this, and maybe some artists don't, but I got a, a lot of practice by tracing the artwork of my heroes. I'm the polar opposite. Yeah. I never thought that was viable, and I wouldn't even look at art, other people's art, while I, I drew. <laughs> my, that's my entire life. I've been well, because I found it, you know, at an early age, I got a good understanding of, like, because I love comic art, too, of yeah. anatomy by by drawing over those lines. You know, I fu- you I've found out since the, some of the greatest comic book artists out there, that's how they learn. So you're, yeah. you did it the right way. Yeah, okay, so there's that. Yeah, so I, when I started off, I was a filthy tracer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I learned. My, my heroes growing up, um, well, growing up, yeah, Neil Adams. Um, I don't know that I had art here. I, I appreciated art, you know, and, and a lot of comic book art. But then when I got older, um, Drew Struzan, if anybody knows who Drew Struzan is, is like the ma- the best movie poster. You'll know his art. You may not know his name, but you know his art because he's done all the movie posters um, of, of our lifetime, basically. He's, he's retired now. Um, but uh, so Drew Struzan, Charles Burns, insane line work. Um, and Mike Mignola, who's also a comic book artist, who's also the master of shadows and light. I would say. Uh, silhouette. Uh, that guy can can simplify um, and and turn an illustration into a design. I, I, yeah, yeah, Mignola is definitely is at yeah. the height for me. It's amazing. But uh, yeah, so growing up, as far as my illustration style went. Um, I was told, my dad was always like, you're going to grow up and you're going to be doing paintings that they sell at the gas station on the corner by Cedar Point and like all this horrible stuff. And he wasn't behind my art career. But my teacher said, if you want to make it in art, you, are you? you no, I'm just thinking of my teacher's stuff. My, my teacher said, um, the best thing to do is not to have a style. The best thing to do is to be able to do any style. Because if you want you know, whatever, you want chunky, you know, polka dot man or whatever like that, go to chunky polka dot man artist and he can do that for you. But if you want that or you want this or you want that, go to somebody who can, you know, if you can do it all, then you're going to get all the work or you're going to get a lot of work. Um, so I never focused on a style and, and I don't think, I think the, be- the biggest compliment you can give to your heroes is to have a hero and have your art not look like it, you know. So, um, you know, we, we have our inspirations. We don't, we don't knock them off. We're expi- uh, expired. <laughs> We're inspired by them for different reasons, basically. And that's all my yap. Yeah, the only thing I'll add is I was a very good, shy child, but my art teachers hated me because I would never listen to them. So, sorry. <laughs> True story. My, my high school art teacher, I got a, I got a scholarship. Uh, one of the first schools I got a scholarship to for, for uh, college. Uh, she threatened to write them and tell them to rescind it. <laughs> wow. I think it's funny that you and I had two different ways of growing up in art, and we ended up in the same place. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You in the back, sir. How do you know when you're done with something? When Greg says what? When they I take it, they take it <laughs> off your desk and say you're done. You usually you you okay. So that's there's two answers to that. One is you have a you obviously have a time frame you have to stick to. Um, but but the the real answer is how do you know when you're done within that time frame? Like when when you say this is finished enough because you could probably work it forever if you wanted to. And I would I don't I won't speak for Chris, but in my case, um, there there's sort of over time I've developed uh, what I call a tolerance uh, to pain, which is <laughs> which is where I go, I can live with this. If I have to stop here, I can live with it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean, there's times where I'll, you know, uh, kind of go back on that and, and after a little space I see an opening where there is more time and I go, oh, well can I go back into this? And then lots of times I'll do it and I won't tell anyone. <laughs> I should get my shot. I what forgot what the freaking question was. <laughs> God, I'm old. What was the question again? I'm sorry, sir. He, oh, when it's done. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, there's two things. One, one is that I will constantly, you get usually about a, a, a year to work on an art package and I will constantly revisit things because I always think I can do better. I can do better. Yeah. Um, and you look at stuff, ah, I need to change this. I need to screw around with this. But then you also have to have the, 
the taste to know when you're just going to overwork something, you know, because you could just overwork something right into the ground and then it just looks awful. So you have to know where to draw the line. But for, for me, something's not ever done, like I said, until they come and take it off your desk because, you know, we both want our stuff to be the best it can be. Um, and if it's sitting on your hard drive or sitting on your drawing desk, you know, waiting for a job to get the certain no reason why you can't go back and look at it and say, can, can I make that better? So it, it doesn't end until the deadline ends. But now, before I ask uh, this gentleman back here to give his question, the only thing I'll add to that is um, uh, there, there is sort of this, this um, headspace that when you step away from something and you've maybe moved on to something else and you come back to it, you can kind of see it a little clearer. So, so there is that kind of process of being able to reevaluate as you go through. Uh, excuse me, uh, yes, young, young man? That's what I'm saying! <laughs> <laughs> well, when you work for the slower companies. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo. <laughs> you used to. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. What would the artistic direction be? What? Chris, so are you saying what theme would I want? Chris would do Batman sixty six again. What theme? <laughs> I would. I I would honestly love to do Batman sixty six again because if you guys don't know, I had like what, Greg, three weeks. Yeah, for well, for the main stuff, like we had a lot, we had more time for like those little drawings for the tags and things like that. That kind of went into November or so. But for the three black back glasses and back boxes and all that, I had like three weeks, and there was stuff I wanted to do. Um, I know I wanted to have like the Batmobile zooming out of the Batcave and have all the Batcave computers and crap in the background. And uh, I just didn't have time. And, and what really saved my butt was a lot of the artwork from that art package was stuff that I had done for, like, model kit boxes, you know, for, for companies that had licensed Batman. And I just, you know, I always own the artwork, but you don't just want to, you know, I'm, not, I'm just going to use this. So I called up the model kit guy, and I said, hey, I'm in a pinch here. I've, I've got very little time. Um, is all right if I use this artwork? And everybody was like, you know, you know we're all in this together. Sure, go for it. There's a, there a guy, a statue guy, too, that I did some artwork for. And that really saved my butt. Um, but, yeah, I would love, if I could do that, that's, that's kind of like a crap answer because it's, it's something I already did. But I would love to redo Batman. But if I could do anything, God, there's a lot I want to do. What would be like the... You have a good answer? I would want to do this Jeremy Packer pinball machine. <laughs> the Jeremy Parker. No, that, that's a pretty, it's a pretty tough question yeah. to hit. The only thing I'll say is the closest I probably got to that was uh, working on Primus to a degree. Even though there, you know, there was a little bit of, of um, you know, influence uh, based on, on some existing things in their sort of catalog. Uh, stylistically, I sort of developed my own style and take on how to approach that, that's the closest, maybe. I mean. Uh, Eric, I think you said before that you would color stuff more three times. So. I, not three times. Okay, so Seven. When no. Did you know, when did you know the book? Or oh, oh, well, so that, that, was, that was a different case. So that was, a, that was an odd case where I thought I would be clever and, and limit um, the color space I was working in to something that actually was legitimately from the 70s era. Um, you did browns and greens? Well, no, no. I literally actually did research and created my own color profile uh, in, in the computer machines um, that would literally limit my color, like what I could choose, right? Some people are going, well, I wish you'd do it more often. But trust me. They're on pin side. Don't worry, they're on pin side. You're not, not you guys. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, what happened was it was a terrible, terrible idea. And it kept getting worse as I went on. But did you make that decision? Like I made that. Yeah, I made that decision. How do you wrestle that? Because before you know that interview, I'm already into like high school. I'm going into the Chicago. 
I wanted to be able to hold my head up. I wanted, I, I mean, I knew I was in trouble already because Keith kept going, make Godzilla green. <laughs> Keith Ellen, everyone. Anyway, uh, no, that was my choice also. Um, uh, yeah, no, it, 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 I'm not often afforded the, the opportunity uh, time-wise to do stuff like that, but that one, it, was, it, was, it wasn't that long into it going, this is not working. Um, and actually at that point, I think I even flipped the composition too, right? Like the train and everything was on one side. This is the pro, by the way, that I did this on. Yeah. He's right. Yeah, I, I flipped that. Right. That's right. Yes. So, so I had. A, that's true. All the Japanese text on the pro back glass. So I flipped the composition. I go, oh, this weight, this weight's much better. And so I, I move the logo and everything, and I'm going, oh, this is this is great. But I never flipped the Japanese text. So when we threw it over to Toho, they're like, what in the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but they said it differently. Than me. Uh, I was paraphrasing. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yes. Large changes in my artwork. Tell, um, tell them about Elton John. It changes his outfit. I changed his outfit a few times. Do it. Do it. We get something more sparkly. <laughs> um, <coughs> major changes. Ma you mean the black and white? Well, now, Greg, um, I actually had some problem remembering this. Um, when we when we went into the monsters, was was the black and white something that was on the table, or was that something that we were already into and said, "Hey, let's try this." Yeah. Yeah, and that was the that was a horrendous task too, because when you build something in Photoshop, in order to be flexible. For, for the clients, for your art director, for everybody, you want to have everything, when you look at something, everything is a separate element. So it's, in, in Photoshop, it's on a separate layer. When you're done with something like a play field, there's like, what, like 800 layers? <laughs> it's like insane. <coughs> so when we went to do the, the black and white version of the monsters, I had to go, what, what you do is you select one layer, yes, out of 800, and then you hit black and white and then it will turn black and white, and then you have like what, like six or seven different color selectors? I'm not talking about I've got a shortcut for you, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's why everybody true loves story. Chair True story, true story. Anyone who knows, if you take a, a layer on top of everything, and you make it black, and you set the mode to color. Well, no, I know, I know, well, how, to, I, I know how to make I, it all I, black and white. I, you know, I could just flatten it all and go black and white. <laughs> but what I was worried about doing was like when sometimes w uh, certain colors don't react well to black and white, and yellows Val will come out like 50% black. Yeah, va value is in color versus value in black and white are, is different. Yeah, so I had to go through 800 layers and go, okay, hit black and white, and then you go yellow, it's too dark, lighten it up, lighten it up, green, blue, blue. And then you do all these adjustments, you get it where you want it, okay, next layer. 800 times. Sucked ass. <laughs> well worth it. Well worth it. Um, but uh, w it was a tough task. That wasn't something that really, it kind of changed on me in the middle of it. But, uh, and if anybody wants to know, I ended up getting the color package because I spent a lot of time on the color. Uh, yes, I did spend a lot of time making it black and white, but I thought the colors were really cool in that game, so I got the color one. And what do I know? I screwed up. I should have got the black and white one. That's what everybody wants. Uh, the gentleman from Infinity Ward. <laughs> I went to the bathtub school of art. <laughs> uh, I did. I did not uh, get into uh, physics. Uh, I avoided that. No, I. Uh, I went to um, the Columbus College of Art and Design in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I was a fine arts major, uh, insert joke here, until uh, the other fine artists, uh, upperclassmen, graduated. Um, and I saw them around town, not at galleries, but at gas stations. Anyway, and so I changed majors, uh, and I was actually uh, time-based, uh, which was film and animation. 
Uh, that was my major, and that's what I majored in uh, with a minor in fine arts. Um, but uh, for the most part, most of what I did, I never took an illustration class. Um, uh, and so I it wasn't until I got out of that um, and, and sort of got suckered into the uh, dot-com boom uh, in, in the uh, 2000 aughts. I think it was like uh, year 2000, roughly. And, and um, I was sort of suckered into that, and I got stuck in that for, well, uh, about a decade. Um, and when I came back and actually picked up a pencil again, uh, for me, because of all of that kind of, you know, design, programming, you name it, uh, I had a very different perspective in how I approach things, um, and that helped me out a little bit. Because before that, I, I, again, I still did, I did animation over the years and some other stuff, um, but, but very infrequently. Uh, again, school of bathtub. Um, Basically, yeah, uh, high school education for me, um, I didn't take any college. I actually had, I mean, it turns into a freaking pity party. I had a full scholarship to Center for Creative Studies, which is a very prestigious art school in Detroit. And uh, I had to forego that because I got kicked out of the house at 17. Boy, I sound like a troublemaker. <laughs> um, and uh, I had to get a job. I had to get a job and support myself, so I had to pass on the scholarship which I don't really regret, because I heard a lot of people that go to art college usually get spoon-fed a lot of stuff. That, no, I just paid off my student loan uh, just within the last, you know, three years. And I got to avoid that, too. As yeah, a bonus, you, you, so. you made the right choice. I, by the way, I tell everyone out there, kids, stay in school till you get your high school diploma, and then just stay out. Get the job. Just stay out. If you can, you know, I, I was very fortunate to get jobs where they were willing to train me. Like, I learned... Um, when, when computers came in, I know a lot of people in other fields that lost their jobs to technology, so when computers came in, I'm not, I'm, I wanted to fight it. I wanted to, to be hand-drawn. Greg, you can, you, you know, relate to that. You know, it's like, what's this computer crap? Nah, I'm not using that digital thing. And, um, but it, uh, I was like, uh, I'm going to have to learn this. I'm going to be left in the dust if I don't. So I was fortunate to get a lot of jobs where they said, well, we, we love your art. Um, we're willing to train you while we pay you to work. And I, that's how I got to learn how to do digital art and, and stuff. But basically, just sitting for me, it was just sitting around drawing. That's it. Yeah, the only, thing I, the only thing I'd add to that is just the fact that as a visual artist who essentially your portfolio is really what you get hired on, um, uh, you know, schooling is not... Always, yeah. yeah. Have a strong portfolio. Yeah, just have art. a strong. That's portfolio. all you need. Yeah. Be behind, yeah. Behind J J Joe, you're next. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up. Um, I was uh, born in uh, 1976, uh, and uh, no, I grew up obviously in the heyday of arcades. Um, and my dad grew up in the heyday of pinball before. And so my dad was a huge pinball guy. And he was also, he worked construction. We didn't have, we were lower middle class at, the, at best. And uh, one time on a, on a job, he uh, ended up getting a um, uh, Gottlieb roller coaster. And it worked, it wasn't the best, but it worked. And uh, we had that in our basement, and, and I, I played it every day. And that, that's sort of what sparked it for me, um, other than obviously going to the arcades and seeing, you know, more modern games as it went. And then in college, uh, Attack from Mars, I mean, like, you know, you name it. So I always had a love for it, and I still have a love for gaming in general, um, outside of pinball as well. And so um, that definitely it was just always there. No, I, I, as a matter of fact, when it comes to everything that I love art-wise, I avoided it all because I uh, had a, a tremendous fear of failure. Uh, and as Keith can attest and Greg can attest, it's still there. Um, but but I I didn't take any illustration class. I avoid like I grew up. I wanted to make comic books. That was what I wanted to do. I avoided it all. Um, but again, serendipitously. You know, as I got older and more mature and, and kind of like, well, maybe we'll try this, we'll try this, I, I feel like I've 
sort of gotten closer to where I, I wish I would have started decades ago, but I didn't, and I'm okay with that. I mean, it's fine, but uh, maybe I'm smarter or stupider. Just imagine how sick people would be of you now if you've been working for 20 years. And That's a people. good point. That's a good point. The, the inks weren't there for it before, right? The colors? No. We'll get to the glass. Um, my, what was the base question? Could you? We kind of riff, so I kind of forget what the base. Oh, uh, pinball. Um, I grew up playing hockey. I played hockey for 30 years, and my brother played hockey, and he was a year older than me, so I played pinball in the hockey rinks. You know, I was waiting for my brother to finish um, growing up. And, and what game? You know, if any of you guys remember the Super Awesome Pinball Show, uh, you may remember me mentioning several times how much I fucking hate Captain Fantastic. I hate that game so much. <laughs> and that's what I played growing up. So when I got into pinball, I'm like, oh, they get me that Captain Fantastic game. I remember that. <coughs> it, it was the worst thing ever. I needed anger management after I bought that game. Um, but um, I have actually, I'm going to try and cliff notes this. I have a very interesting, Greg, you, I don't know if I told you this story, so you might be interested in hearing this uh, pinball story. For as much as I've grown up loving pinball, I never thought myself to get into pinball until around 1996 when I was working for a t-shirt company and we were getting a license for the band Kiss because they were going to go on a reunion tour and put their makeup on again and all that. It was going to be a big deal. And I was talking to the licensing people and I said, you guys should license somebody to make another Kiss pinball machine because the original Bally one was so popular and collectible and all that. And they said, well, that sounds good. You know, put us in touch with somebody. And I'm like, oh. And, I, and I'm just this, like, art director at a T-shirt company. I'm like, all right, well, I called up Stern because they were the only people in the business. And I said, hey, would you guys be interested in doing a Kiss pinball machine? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, I'll get you in touch with the people. But the thing is, is I got to do the artwork. And they're like, and they were probably like, yeah, all right, well, you know, get us in touch with the people and blow me off. But um, so I did some artwork. And uh, my concept was if we did a side view of Gene Simmons with his mouth open, we could mount it right by the flipper, and the flipper would be like, <laughs> you know, that would be awesome. So I, so I drew that up. Anyway, uh, Kiss is Kiss, and so they went to Stern, and I don't know what the actual numbers were, but probably went, this is Gene Simmons of Kiss, and I'd like $5 million for our license. And Stern went, and backed off. I was left with this artwork that I submitted to KISS's website and ended up working for KISS for five years. <laughs> so, and then it wasn't until I got a call from Greg that, um, and what, you know, gosh, if you guys don't know, I mean, like, I'm all about Batman. I have a whole room in my house dedicated to TV show Batman. Greg Ferris calls me up and goes, how'd you like to work on a pinball machine? That sounds like fun, sure. Here, sign this and we'll tell you what it is. Batman 66. I don't think, I don't think, sorry, ex-wife, I don't think I've ever had a harder erection than I did on that phone call. <laughs> that was amazing. Last question. Uh, wait, okay. we didn't, Joe, 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 can we do two? Because we haven't asked the lady, yeah. so go ahead, Joe, and then we'll get to you. You want, well, no, we'll do you. Porn. Okay. Nobody wants to see this. <laughs> no. I, I would. I would. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. N nothing. Nothing comes to mind because I. I do have a lot of interest, but I'm sure there's got to be some property. Uh, that's not me. Uh, you know, that wouldn't no work problem. for me. What if? What if Greg came to you one day and said, "Jeremy, you're working on the Waltons." <laughs> Well, first off, Greg wouldn't do that because uh, I don't know if you know this, but his dog was killed by one of the Waltons long ago. He's not Is a big fan. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he brought up the Waltons. Everyone's going, who the heck is the Waltons? These people know. Okay, so <laughs> go ahead.
Oh boy, can I go first? You, absolutely. Trends in art that I hate. People, give it, give it to me. Come on. People who try to draw like other people. <laughs> there are plenty of what I call poor men zombie yetis out there. Um, so I, I hate that. Um, but no, really, I mean, art. Even though we do it for a living, art is a is a very. It, it's like poetry. It's like music. It's like anything. You don't necessarily have to, like I hate hip hop, but I know a lot of people like it. I hate country music, but I know a lot of people like it. Um, people who like country music don't like alternative music and punk rock and crap like I listen to. Um, all flavors are good. Um, you know, whether it's something I appreciate or not, that's a different story. But I think, you, you know, you need to have you need to have a little bit of everything. Th that's how things stand out. Is 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 by comparison. Like you, you know, you can't have uh, good without bad. You can't have, you know, Jesus without the devil or whatever. I don't know, some sort of a religious figure. Um, so I, I don't. Th there's things that I don't necessarily um, like, but I do appreciate, and there is a difference. I I, I guess I have an answer. Um, I, I don't disagree with what he said. Obviously. You know, it's sort of music and art are sort of like, you know, vitamins. Uh, you need a little bit of everything in your diet to kind of be balanced uh, in my mind. I appreciate a lot of things that I would never do myself personally. Um, but the one thing that I can point to that bothers me as far as trends, and it's been going on for so long, is um, mashups. Uh, you know, you've got the red bubbles out there where people are, you know, mashing up one IP with some with another IP, and it's cute, but they're making money off of this stuff. I mean, you know. <laughs> Do we have to end it there? Uh, oh, we have to give away the thing. Okay. Oh yeah, you gotta give it away. All right. Well, before the, well, we give away the thing, everyone's gonna go. Well, I didn't win, and they're gonna walk out. So I want to say one thing. Um, Everybody here, if you're, if you're here, you're interested in art. That's why you showed up, because we're artists and you want to hear about art. Um, we've talked, we've referred to him a lot in this room. If you guys don't know, and you should, Mr. Greg Ferris has an, an amazing body of art that he's contributed to the pinball world over the years. If you haven't seen it, look it out. Uh, uh, look it up. I'm sure you have, but I would love it if you guys would all give this man a round of applause for what he's done for pinball. <laughs> And he's brought us, he's brought us to you guys. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Oh but no, yeah, and he, 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 know. he makes work. He makes working uh, fun and easy, which is not always the case with art directors. Yeah. And he's never right. grumpy. So and that you know, that's a perfect. All right. So this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do as far as winning the prize. And and Greg, you get to be the judge. How are we gonna? Everyone's just gonna go Rah! and you shout stuff out. How are we gonna do this? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, just a quick question. Uh, answer with applause. You like me better, or do you like? <laughs> you like I'm kidding. If you like Chris better, you win. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no, I was. It's not a tough one. Well, no, no, no. I mean, but how I mean, do you like, execute? Yeah, that's not very hard. Um, <laughs> we get it. Safe. A, a random number between what? No. Um, <laughs> it might resort to that. Yeah. Uh, first off, stick around. Uh, speaking of art, uh, for the next seminar about the f the game that got me on radar for Greg Ferris, which is Magic Girl. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys ever saw that stuff, but I'm just trying to help him out. Right. No, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Okay. How do we give this away? Best All right. We're gonna add. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a trivia question, but you, all right. So you're going to have to raise your hand on this one if if I, you think you, well, I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, how many games have Chris and I done combined? I don't know that answer. <laughs> Literally, we're we're trying to find out. We kind of need to know.
Are you still trying to think? I actually am still figuring it out. <laughs> Greg, hold up your finger. How many has he done? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't show your fingers. <laughs> oh, um. Come on! It depends on if we count ones that are, are been produced. Starting from Ghost with Bugs. Stern, with Stern. Yeah, none of that place has done before. That's what I keep telling I can't use my toes, my shoes are on. Um, I, think, I think 17 sounds right. I think so. Who said 17? You can't win! <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta do something else. Okay. Who 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 didn't go over? Uh, never mind. Who can name who can name one R package? You have to raise your hand first. Who can name one R package that Greg Ferris has done? This guy was Elvira. Here. Elvira. You win. Jonathan, we have a special gift for you backstage afterwards. Ooh. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. Hope we entertained you for 45 minutes. And have a good show. And stick around for Magic Girl. <laughs>